Hello everyone. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about today, um, and I'll get into it a bit more deeply, is a concept that I've been building at Red Eye, which is a company that I work for, um, that will hopefully, it's still uh, in the testing and sort of architectural phases at the moment, but, but the idea here is um, what I'm hoping to do is actually bring the, the analyst right to the app and building the reports that are going to go eventually into the app and remove some of that, I'm going to use the word friction, between what an analyst thinks a report should look like, the graphs they choose, the you know pretty pictures they draw, and how the software dev would enable that into a uh, traditional, well, traditional web app as they exist now. Um, so that's sort of what I'll be talking about today. Um, it's going to touch on containerization and all that sort of fun stuff, so hopefully we can get something kind of cool out of this. Um, quick little, if you've, talk, you've seen me talk before, you've probably seen this slide, I just copied over the template. Um, uh, I've been in or around this space now in Brisbane for about 10 years, done work um, for government and financial services and I've now done, for the last three or four years I work in the tech sector I guess, so I've done a bit of consulting work and now I work as a um, data architect at um, Company called Red Eye, which um, just got acquired by a Fortune 500 company in December, so we're kind of excited. Um, the, uh, I'm, I'm a very passionate open source advocate, so I do tend to lean towards the open source equivalents. If I can host it myself or if I can fire it up on our cluster, I'm much more excited by that sort of tech than something I click a button and go for. So, uh, I mean, I'm, I run Linux right now on my laptop, and that's what I'm doing this right now. I'm that guy, so um, you Occasionally, I can be opinionated on the way things should work, but um, it's coming from the right place. I um, the, the irony of that, of course, is that I also quite like the cloud. The cloud hosts and does those things I can't be bothered doing. And not if anyone's tried to stand up a Kubernetes cluster, it's about the worst thing in the world to try and do. So I much prefer it when I don't have to do that. Um, so that's what I quite like about the cloud, is it does the bits I don't want to do, and then it lets me do the bits that I do want to do. And it does it in a way that's relatively secure for most of the time. Um, and finally, my education is actually in business. I've never done an IT degree. Um, I'm self-taught, and that often gives people the stirks, but um, that's the other side which I tackle this from. I tackle uh, data engineering and tech and all of that from a passion point of view. And so occasionally, I don't know some of those ground things that a lot of the tech guys are like, why don't you know this? Um, so I just wanted to quickly talk about the two core technologies that are going to drive this, I guess, architecture that I'm trying to build to enable this analyst workflow right into a into the software. Um, the first and core technology that's going to drive it is Metabase. I don't know if anyone's played with Metabase, but it's this very interesting new reporting tool, well, new reporting tool that has many, many different options. It's sort of like Power BI Lite, but importantly, what I can do with it is I can pull it straight out of Docker Hub and I can chuck it into my own container. That means that it's quite malleable. I can do a lot of stuff with it. I can start to really get in there and play with how it's connecting to our data, how it's playing with uh, the, the app, all of that sort of stuff. So it's a very interesting um, reporting tool because it gives me a lot more control than say something like Tableau or Power BI because it lets me put it up in my own clusters. It lets me control exactly where and what it's touching. So it's really, really important for the, the architecture that we're going with today. It also has two really other interesting capabilities. One is it supports server-side rendering, which I don't know if you've ever tried to enable something through an app, not just through a web page. That's really, really important to hide where the hell this thing's coming from. And the other interesting thing that's held behind an enterprise license that I'm hoping to be able to get to try really, really soon is it offers self-service interactive analytics. And what I mean by that is I can essentially fire up cube inside Metabase and I can render that out into the app. That would be a paid product, of course, but what that would give you the power as a customer of, say, Red Eye or any app, really, is to actually have slices, have those things so you can build out your own tables, build out your own reports. So it'll be right down at that level. And that's a really interesting feature that if it works the way they promised in the sales pitch, would be really, really cool. And so that's the other reason we're sort of looking at that 
particular piece of tech. Now, there's one other piece of tech that we're talking about in this architecture, and it's the uh, it's DuckDB. Now, I don't know how many people are floating around in R data engineering or in LinkedIn, but it's it's just everywhere at the moment. This particular piece of tech. It's really interesting, and what you'll often hear it referred to, just like um, uh, Peter said just before, is that it's bringing that data warehouse to your laptop. But there's another thing that they talk about with it, which I find is really interesting which is SQL Lite for OLAP workloads. Now, when I think about that particular type of technology, what I'm thinking about is bringing that data as close to where I'm trying to use it, where I'm trying to compute, process it as possible. The binary is small enough for me to be able to do that, and so what this lets me do is actually chuck that binary straight into the container that Metabase is sitting in, and potentially even bring the data with it. So that's the really, really interesting thing that DuckDB in my mind was going to give me the power to do is actually have a reporting container sitting there with exactly the right data we need at the right time ready to be reported on and it's all happening in the same machine that that person is using to render their report and that's the really really interesting thought process that came about as I was building this architecture so what what does all this mean? How do we bring all this together? Um, I've talked, and I'm not going to go into the depth of the blog where I actually talked and ripped out the doc file and how it was all working, blah, blah, blah. But what these two pieces of technology actually give me the power to do is to actually stand up something like a reporting container, not a server, so it's just a container, and actually have the data that that container is trying to render and process right there next to it. What that does, at least from the infrastructure perspective, is one, it means I'm not making 123,000 different connections on cluster to my backend analytics service. And two, it means that the end user isn't sitting here waiting for my backend system to process all of this information and do the same thing over and over and over again. That user is attached to this container and the data is right there with it. And in theory, if I scale this out correctly and have the correct pipelines, what this means is that I could actually potentially give each user their own container with their own data. From a security perspective, I don't think you can get any cleaner. So that was sort of the, the thought process from the infrastructure perspective. And then there's the business user perspective. I've, I've always had, I, I come up from an, an analyst background. I was that guy who did the Excel spreadsheets that everyone complains about. And I know that the first thing that people often say is I want you to just take this report that I built in Excel and put it there. And that's normally a very hard thing to do. But if that report was built in Metabase by that user, and Metabase has a no-code interface, I can give that out to business analysts, that report that they built can just be shared into our app via server-side rendering. And I don't, as the software developer, need to touch the report. I just need to touch the link that renders that report into my app. And so that is the most exciting part of all of this to me, is I can actually get that report that that person has built over here in Metabase into the app where they want it for the customer, and I can do that without any friction. It's just a CI CD process, and over it goes. So that is the kind of core idea of what this is going to be. Um, now, the unfortunate piece is that Metabase saw this coming from a mile away, and they've actually locked the CI CD process behind the enterprise license, and I haven't had a chance to be able to play with how that works. It exists. The, I guess, infrastructure of Metabase is there to export the metadata for the reports, bring it through, like, get yeah, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, and load it back up, which is great because it means once we buy it and I can play with it, I'll be able to have things like dev and prod workloads and those sorts of things that you just never hear of in our reporting space. And so, really, really hoping that as we traverse through the, I guess, learning experience, DuckTV and Metabase, we'll be able to really start to build out that containerized reporting that comes out through the app with the data right there in the background. Now, you're probably all wondering how we get the data in the background. That's a question for another day, I guess. But essentially what we have in our background is that our orchestrator is building out a DuckDB database that sits on S3 that that container can just copy over and automatically connect to. 
And so there's a lot more to what that database is, which obviously I can't divulge, but that's the kind of really cool thing here is you can actually just use your existing tech, whether that's Airflow, in my case, CBT and Dagster, Mage, um, and just have that build a generic DuckDB database that you then just pull in. And then all of a sudden, right there, DuckDB can connect to it, it's ready to go, Metabase has it, and it's working like that across billions of rows. And bringing that compute that that container already has access to right there to our user. Hasn't been without, I guess, its pitfalls. This is pretty new tech. Metabase at the moment doesn't really have a DuckDB connector. It's a community maintained one. Um, that's just maintained by some guy, I think, in the US who's doing it because he can. Unfortunately, he doesn't update it very often, so I've had to work out how to pull that down and compile that jar file myself, which is fun, and then load that into my Docker file container. That pretty well makes this not production ready. Um, but it proves the concept, which is really, really cool. I needed to do this because without the latest versions of DuckDB, I don't have my AWS credential chain, which means I can't pull from S3 without putting my access key and password in every file. So that wasn't going to happen. And so we do have some, I guess, what's the word, growing pains happening with this because we are running right at the bleeding edge of where all this technology is working. It's doable, but it, it's a bit of work. There's a bunch of repos that are dedicated to just compiling something so that it works properly. Um, as I mentioned, we're currently in the evaluation. We've actually have stood this up in our cluster. We've got a development reporting server that has the DuckDB backend. It's all working, working wonderfully. We're currently evaluating whether Metabase can actually meet our reporting needs as my boss wants them. Um, pretty big she's on the page, so I'm concerned. He apparently needs to have more than that. Um, I haven't had a chance, but I'm really looking forward to playing with the CI CD setup. It's a very interesting meta model that they built that you can load out of the MetaBase database into another one. And that is how we will get dev and prod workloads for reporting servers that I can enable with zero touch into our production app. Um, and I'm really, really excited to see what their embedded interactive analytics looks like and how that plays out. A product like that, that you can enable through a web app, is kind of exciting and not something I've seen from something as, I guess, flexible as Metabase before. So it'd be really exciting to see where that sort of can go. Um, any questions? Yes, so what, what we essentially have happening in the morning is I have a selection of models that I'm creating to be safe. They're created through our existing analytics uh, engine. Um, and then I actually more or less just copy what that's doing, the part A. Well, not copy, but I already drive all that into the other people who know that they spirit and then it contains the digital compound. Just copy, literally copy, just copy that spirit exclusively. That's what the cool shop does, it's very simple. Uh, but that orchestrator is managing the creation of the data. It means I can actually have all the models that drive all about how the eye works, most of the working off our existing goal layer, drive the same thing, and I do the other side, 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 and I um, I mean, it will be interesting to see how that goes, um, but honestly, I'm not ready to be in that little bit of data. We're barely touching a terabyte at the moment. So, if, if I make it past about 10 or 100 terabytes, maybe I'll start to worry about it. But right now, so I'm just writing everything in S3 and I say AWS infrastructure, even at a terabyte, it's not going to be So, so the whole point of this is to have the data flow so it's yes. close in and then you can use the mechanism to find memory. Sorry. And, and then you can use the memory as well. Yes, yes, yes. especially with the way that DB miner is doing things. Essentially, what I've done is I've copied, we create half a for the 
um, here in such a nice scope. And what I've done is just copy it into the file and send it from that. And that just enables that to be really fast and a little bit of an infusion into the You mentioned the block, where you get, you mentioned the block, but you went into more detail. Sorry? Did you mention something about a block? Where you Oh um, yes, so um, uh, it's uh, it's on a Slack. I think I'll also put it up on my LinkedIn. Um, but it's blog.eridgrail.com, and I've got a few things up there because I look at how it's used. I've got more detail about the architecture and came to that, and hopefully there I can keep going with how we go over if we actually purchase it and actually try out some of these other things. We're still going through the evaluation stage, so we may come out that the uh, device is not there, but. In the effects, um, effects access um, the effects access the containers that like first time five email be with a certificate or something. Uh, so uh, without divulging too much, uh, Red Arm Model is just running their own cluster software on EC2. Um, this is cluster essentially, so that's where it sits. It's just sitting within our existing workflows. You just sit it by the internet or something? Pretty much. If you don't, if you don't develop work, um, if you want to access the actual interface to access the reporter, it's yeah, just from their base of VAR or RedEye.com, and that's where it exists. The big thing though is what I want the app to do, which is also sitting on the same side of that same cluster, is it will do the service side rendering in that same instance. So it will not be an instance, obviously, but it will be an instance in the cluster. And so everything should be operating in theory in the same cluster as well. Nice. Okay. Um, basically, we have another, of course, for Andrew.